Hi, I'm Lou Green, and this is America's Crossroads. Today I'm with Vince Giordano in Brooklyn, New York. Are you the kid from Brooklyn? <laughs> no. No. I, I don't want to be associated with that guy. He's fun to watch, but uh, I'll leave it at that. Yeah, Vince is a very well-known band leader, the leader of the Nighthawks, Vince Giordano's Nighthawks, in New York City. Uh, Vince has become an overnight sensation, and it only took how long to do that, Vince? 45 years, <laughs> just like that. <laughs> yeah. And Vince has the stuff, and what we're really talking about today is what does it take to, to, to put a band like this together, and where do you get the music? If this is the 1920s, the 1930s. Vince is the great expert, so instead of me shooting my mouth off, mm -hmm. I'll hear it from the king. Well, a lot of the material that we use comes from what they call stock arrangements. And mm -hmm. What's a stock arrangement? Well, in American popular music, there were always composers writing tunes for dancing, for Broadway shows, later on for films, phonograph records. You had music all the time. What's the new tune? What's the new tune? So you could play it at your piano, or you could buy a piano roll, you could buy a record, or if you wanted to go to a dance and hear a band play, you have to have an arrangement. And uh, an arrangement is a series of parts. See, this, this is a later one. This is like from the 30s. But it's a classic tune that goes back to the teens. This is W.C. Handy's St. Louis Blues. Everybody knows the St. Louis Blues, or at least a lot of people do. And you would have all these parts for the different fellows in the band. You had a first trumpet part, a second trumpet part, uh, third trumpet, trombone, you know, however the big, big the band was. So you pass these all out to the musicians in your band, and voila, everybody is playing the St. Louis Blues. Now you got this from your local music store. So at one given time, there were probably thousands of bands playing this exact same arrangement, uh, you know, in the United States, in Europe, and uh, Asia because they all wanted to be up to date and play the music that the dancers wanted to hear from them. Now Vince, if I take this yeah. right here and go down the street and get a bunch of musicians together and give them this, what do it sound like? Probably, <laughs> probably not so good because the way to play this music is almost like a lost language. It's a way of interpreting it. You really have to listen to the old phonograph records to see the way musicians played these notes. It's like learning a different language. Right. You can't just pick up a book and start reading it and understand. You have to hang with somebody of, of that nature. Just, oh, that's how you pronounce that. That's how you phrase that. Mm -hmm. So, and it takes a while to, to, oh, yeah. to, to, to get a, a band that's all feeling the same way about the, the music and, uh, and it's not easy because a lot of musicians today don't want to play you know, older kind of jazz, they want to play their jazz or more modern things or original music and that's well and good and fine yeah. but I just want to give you some of the, uh, oh, the yeah. details. Well, you know, um, you have how many of these arrangements? 60,000. And is that enough to get you through this your usual gig? Well, sometimes. <laughs> Believe it or not, people still ask for things that I've never even heard of. Oh, yeah. uh, I mean, they think I have every piece of music that was ever written, and that's not true. Um, I have a lot of stuff, but there's a lot of stuff that I'm still looking for. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stuff that was never published. Certain bands uh, within the orchestra themselves, they had very talented musicians, and they would write tunes, these little jazz tunes. and. Yeah. The stuff wasn't published, so wherever that went, I don't know. Well, Vince, um, some of these guys were prolific arrangers mm. in this era. Yeah. Uh, do you remember who some of the good ones might have been? Oh, sure. Uh, a fellow named Frank Skinner. He mm -hmm. wrote thousands of these things. He later went on to go to Hollywood and did uh, Academy Award winning scores like in Frankenstein, a lot of. Yeah. Uh, uh, Hollywood scores. 
Archie Blyer was a, was a hot guy in the 1920s and 30s. He later went on to TV. A guy named Arthur Lang, L-A-N-G-E, he was probably one of the first fellows to go out to Hollywood and create the first uh, studio bands when sound records came, uh, when sound recording came in and they needed music. Mm -hmm. Robert Russell Bennett, the dean of Broadway uh, uh, orchestration, started out writing these stock arrangements. Mm -hmm. And then there's been other people, Don Redman, who worked uh, for uh, uh, Fletcher Henderson and his own band, he did some. There were, there were, I don't know, at least 20 or 30 that I could name off, but uh, those are the most prolific people that I can remember right now. So you have all of these uh, categorized and stored in mm -hmm. a library. Right. And uh, you, you have your books for the band, you take them out with you when you go and you have a certain number of these in those books in case something uh, special shows up or somebody needs a special song, you kind of anticipate that stuff. Yeah, sometimes people email me or they phone me and uh, they, they we're coming in, we'd like to hear mm -hmm. something. So usually I make a Xerox of, I try not to bring out the originals anymore because the, the paper is fragile. Right. And, uh, and then I have a special way of giving it out to the guys. I grabbed this from Jimmy Durante as you take my Xeroxes and I just fling them at the fellas. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I claim it's like airmail. Oh know, yeah. As an yeah. airmail. Well, look at the, you save the postage. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, Vince, we're down in your, in your uh, in uh, nerve center in the exactly. dungeon down here. Most people have a wine cellar. <laughs> uh, Vince has a, a sheet music and a arrangement cellar mm -hmm. down here, orchestration cellar. Mm -hmm. And this is where the orchestrations are filed library style, which you got to be organized if you have that many, right Vince? That's right. So what do you plan to do with all this stuff someday? Because it's, you know, uh, one of these days you collect all this stuff and you say, uh, now what? Mm. Well, I've been making phone calls and emails to different organizations around the country and uh, haven't been too successful in mm -hmm. finding a home for when I go to that big bandstand in the sky. Well, you, you know, maybe somebody will find you. There's got to be somebody interested in this era of American music which took the entire world by storm. Mm -hmm. uh, they were playing this stuff in the Soviet Union, they were playing this stuff in China, they were playing this stuff, and you find records occasionally of this. And it's, it's amazing. Yeah, this uh, jazz music and pop music, it went all over the world, and all of a sudden these countries that had no idea of of, of other kinds of music outside of what they played, mm -hmm. they adopted it and it became part of their uh, dance uh, and fun scene. But because you put all this stuff together, now people come to you as the go-to guy for the 20s and 30s for the music. Yeah. And you do uh, Boardwalk Empire. Yes. You did, what, The Aviator? Aviator, we did Summer Cotton Club. Yeah. Um, I helped Dick Hyman with a bunch of uh, things on the, some of the Woody Allen films and supplied some arrangements there and uh, even did a film with Madonna wow. which um, I don't advise watching. <laughs> you need at least six or eight cups of coffee to get you through it. But uh, it's, it's been a great experience and of oh, course yeah. played a lot of parties and galas and nightclubs so mm -hmm. it's, it's been a good, it's good a good run. Well, just, and you, you know, did the work on your hands and knees and barns and wet basement and fighting off rats oh yeah. and, and the whole oh. thing. I mean, you've... you've uh, I cleaned out three theaters. I was in a theater in St. Louis for almost three weeks. This is the old Ambassador Theater. They were going to tear it down and grabbing as much as I can. I was covered with soot and dirt. I mean, I look like a homeless person from New York, you know. And then I've gone through a lot of basements and attics and garages and... Uh, uh, it's it's been a real oh, great. it's exploration, you know, and this is this is the treasure. Well, thanks for the journey, Vince. You got it, Lou. It's America's crossroads comes to Brooklyn. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank great. you. <laughs>
Thank you.